Hello friends, welcome to Lug Life. You guys, we've been on YouTube almost 10 years. And over those 10 years, we've made lots of different types of videos. This is the first time we have ever made this video. Yes. We're preparing for a volcano. Yeah. Many of you have messaged us, uh, maybe you've seen on the news, there's a volcano close to Anchorage, Mount Spur, that is, um, well, forecasted to most likely erupt in the next several weeks or months. We'll tell you more about that a little bit later. Uh, but there are some things that it's helpful to have on hand uh, when preparing for a volcanic eruption. Now, this is not my first, nor your first. Nope volcanic eruption. Uh, I've had, uh, I think I figured out three or four of them uh, since I've lived in Alaska since I was three years old. You've had one. One, yeah. And so there are just some things that we're gonna get today. We've got a list going. We're gonna talk you through like what the heck it looks like to prepare for a volcano here in Alaska. So this here is Mount Spur. You can see it there um, with the little volcano icon. And it is only like 76 or 78 miles away from Anchorage. You actually can see it from Anchorage. So it's not like this is a volcano that is a long ways away from here. It is a volcano that is pretty darn close. And so if and when it erupts, uh, the odds are, of course, based on like wind direction, that the ash cloud will probably impact us here in Anchorage. So that's why we are preparing. Now, the last time Mount Spur erupted, it was 1992. I was 12 years old and living here in Anchorage. And you guys, here's what's so awesome. I still have ash from the 1992 eruption. I was going to Romick Junior High School at the time, and this uh, was something that we did as part of our learning to live with technology class at Romick Junior High School. We gathered 100% Alaskan volcanic ash, and we sold it for 50 cents a bag. And it says on the back, directions use as a souvenir or even fertilizer. <laughs> so this ash was from the last time Mount Spur erupted in 1992. And it looks like there's a pretty good chance it may erupt again soon. So I'll be able to add to my Mount Spur ash collection. So the volcano is, like I said, like 70 plus miles away from Anchorage. Uh, so obviously things like lava, that kind of stuff, no danger to us. To us. However, the biggest risk is is the ash cloud mm -hmm. um, and the reason the ash is such a such a problem is that it is like it's almost like glacial silt it's really really fine mm -hmm. uh, and so just some of the things that you have to be worried about is getting it in your eyes it can actually like scratch your eyes uh, even on your car windows um, if you run your windshield wipers that windshield wiper fluid it can scratch the glass because of how fine it is yeah. uh, gets in your vehicles like air filter and oil filter it just gets in everywhere yes it does um and so a lot of the things that we have on our list to get are things that will hopefully help us with the ash issue of this potential volcanic eruption mm -hmm. now um, as far as when and if the volcano will erupt, there's not really any way to know for sure. Right, they just are monitoring it because there is heightened activity, but they don't, there's no way to be like, it will erupt at this time on this day. What they've said is that the most likely outcome is an eruption within weeks or months is the term they're using. Right. Very vague. Right. Could be within days, um, but it could be a long time. And so we're just starting the preparation as with Lots of people here in the Anchorage area. My work. <laughs> yeah, lots of people are already preparing yeah. for the potential impacts of uh, of the volcano. Um, so we have a list that we have been compiling, mm -hmm. and we thought, you know what, let's just go out tonight, start picking up items off our list. And as we do, we're just going to talk to you about why we're getting certain things, uh, other things that maybe people uh, would need that we don't. So we're just going to bring you along as we as we volcano prep. What a weird. What a weird video to make. Yeah. Stop number one on our volcano prep ace hardware. Okay, we found windshield washer fluid and we found like a wide tape that we're gonna put around some of our draftier windows and doors to keep ash out. All right, so we found the masks. I feel like we bought a lot of these several years ago. <laughs> got rid of them all. And got rid of them all. Next thing on our list are flashlights. Um, even though the days are getting longer in the event that it happens and causes any sort of power outages, which is a possibility, mm -hmm. we want to have flashlights. We only have a couple at home, so I think we're going to get a couple more. And these are the N95 masks that we ended up going with. So we got masks, flashlights, tape, and windshield washer fluid all here at Ace. 
So we made pretty good progress on our list at Ace. Yeah. Uh, got pretty much everything on our list that we needed with the exception of some food and water that we will get next. Uh, now some things that we don't need. Um, we obviously already have an earthquake kit at home. So we have like a like survival ration of food, mm -hmm. um, a lot of stuff like in our earthquake kit. So worst case scenario, we could bust that out. Or crank radio if we need it. Yeah, that kind of stuff. <laughs> so we have all of that. Mm -hmm. Now here's the thing with volcanoes. Um, like I said, I've been through a few of them and most of the time it's, uh, it's kind of an inconvenience for a few days. The city shuts down, uh, airport shuts down because planes cannot, thry, uh, cannot fly through or near ash clouds. Mm -hmm. So things just kind of hit. And the ash cloud, cloud will go like 50,000 feet in the air, so. Gigantic. Yeah. And depending on how long the eruption occurs will kind of depend on how long things shut down. Right. So you really shouldn't drive your cars um, if possible. It's just not good for vehicles. Uh, also, it just kicks up the ash cloud, which is terrible for air. Mm -hmm. um, so I think our plan when it happens is just kind of to hunker down at home uh, and ride out the worst of it inside. So that's what we're planning for. Yeah, so I even told Adam, like, so from now on, usually when I am working back-to-back -back days at the office, I will just leave my computer there, but I'm not doing that until after it blows because if it blows, like, tonight, I won't have my computer with me. Yeah, so, so we're just... I can't work. <laughs> so we're just kind of keeping the things with us that we may need. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about pets real quick. Yeah. We don't currently have a pet. No. There is the chance that we may get a pet um, kind of during this whole process. Uh, indoor cats a little bit easier. Yeah. Uh, obviously for dogs, it's more difficult because dogs have to go out every day. Uh, even in fact, a lot of the pet stores are selling these like pet goggles mm -hmm. because of how bad ash can be for your eyes. And booties. And booties for the paws. Uh, even a lot of people are buying like swim goggles. If you have to go outside in it, it really can just like cut up your eyes it's just yeah. so it's so fine if you wear contacts they're they saying recommend don't wear contacts that's exactly right mm -hmm. um so when we get back home a little bit later we'll kind of go through some of the things that we maybe didn't purchase today but have on hand uh that will be helpful mm -hmm. and so now i think we're gonna go to the store and get some food items um because we're talking weeks or months uh obviously we're not getting things that could expire right we're not getting like milk or bread <laughs> nope. Uh, so we're gonna get some canned food items. Mm -hmm. uh, really just kind of enough stuff for a few days to have on hand. Right. We don't really have a lot of non-perishables right now. We're kind of, our pantry is a little bit bare. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna stock up on a few of those. Um, again, in the event we had to hunker down for three, five, seven days even, uh, we're good to go. Yeah. And it's the kind of thing that being out in it is so miserable. And it's like, we don't want to have to door dash during it. No, I don't want other people to have to be out. So we really do want to be like self-reliant during that time. Mm -hmm. So next stop, the grocery store to pick up water and some uh, food snackies. Volcano grocery shopping. Here we go. This is going to be a real blast. Get it? All right, we're starting off with pasta noodles. We've got a bunch of pasta sauce in our pantry already, so do not need to get that. And come on, you guys, what would it be without getting dinty more beef stew? <laughs> Talk about nostalgia. Full confession, Sherry and I both love, love, love Top Ramen. So we're gonna get some of those. We also really love these Bear Creek soup mixes. We're gonna get the cheddar broccoli soup mix. We're also getting some canned fruit. We got peaches and pears, which is actually really funny because I ordered groceries for my mom today and she also wanted peaches and pears in her grocery list. All right, it's canned veggies time. We got corn. Now we're struggling because Sherry does not like canned veggies. I don't like canned veggies. You like canned corn. I like canned corn, but like that's good. No green beans, no peas, no carrots. I will eat them frozen. You'll eat them frozen. Hmm. All right, so here's the stuff we got at the store. Obviously some canned uh, corn, canned peas, pears, peaches, beef stew, got some mashed potatoes, some broccoli soup, four things of ramen, pasta noodles, and some rice. And we do have things um, here, not a ton of stuff, but we've got some stuff in the freezer that we'll have. Obviously we have food on hand and we're not talking we're not talking weeks, we're not talking months, right? We're talking days. Mm -hmm. And so this will just supplement what we had because we didn't have a lot of canned stuff, um, especially to like go with meals. So this will be helpful. We really didn't need a lot, but I think we got what we needed. Now let's go upstairs, talk a little bit more about this whole volcano craziness. All right, we're back home, got groceries put away. 
Um, let's talk a little bit more about volcano. I'm gonna say the earthquake stuff because that's what I'm used to. <laughs> used to earthquake prep, not as youth used to volcano prep. We have many more earthquakes than we do volcanoes. We do. A um, couple things we got that you guys didn't see. We bought big plastic sheets like drop cloths to cover our vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to keep ash out of the engine. That's key. So we got those. Off the windshields. Off the, win yep, off the windshields. That would be great. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of other things. We made a list in Sherry's phone. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just going like, to kind of go through. Um, oh, charged phone chargers. Yeah. One of the things that can happen with ash is power outages. Uh, especially with really heavy ash fall. So we're going to try to have our portable chargers all charged in the event we lose power. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it was the middle of winter, we would make sure we had enough firewood. Mm, that's not really a need right now. Yeah, <laughs> we have some firewood um, mm -hmm. and it's warming up, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, as you guys saw, we got flashlights. Uh, it is nice that the days are getting longer, though. Yeah, we don't need the lights on as much. We do have candles, though, and flashlights. Which is great. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are buying filters for their cars. So that's really popular, oil filters, air filters, uh, just because of what it does. We are not doing that, but here's our plan. Our plan is to, number one, not drive um, mm -hmm. in the ash fall or right after. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, shortly after, to get both of our vehicles oil changed and filters changed. Yeah. Take them in and get it professionally done. Um, so we're not having those things on hand, but we're going to go get them... Uh, we're gonna go get that stuff done shortly after whenever it happens. Yeah. Um, things like moist towelettes. If you get ash on you, just like wipe yourself off if you don't wanna use water. Mm -hmm. um, things like saline solution and eye drops. Mm -hmm. uh, I do remember from being a, both a kid and the last, the last volcano that erupted was Mount Readout. Mm -hmm. That was when you were here, right? Yep, I forget what year that was, but. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, and, I remember getting ash in my eye and it just being like the worst irritant. Yeah. And so yeah. it's just, there. if you go outside, there's just no way not to because it's just all in the air. It's just all in the air. And so, yeah, I don't remember what year that was, but it was after we moved into this house. So yep. post 2008. Um, but yeah, so I do remember just ash being everywhere and in our carport and like for years and years. <laughs> Every it, time we swept, it was like ash. <laughs> like, yeah, oh. <laughs> it's very hard to get rid of. Mm -hmm. um, it is the kind of thing that you don't want to sweep. You want to wet it down. Yeah. Um, because if you sweep it, it just becomes this big dust cloud and goes in the air. Right. And so you want to water it down. In fact, like in a perfect situation, uh, after the volcano blows, we would have rain. Good heavy rain. Good heavy rain. Just like <laughs> knock it all down, turn it into like mud, mm -hmm. let them sweep it up when it's wet and get back to normal. Right. Um, but if you live here in Alaska or if you live, especially in the Anchorage area, um, yeah, don't sweep it. Right. Um, it just and makes it worse. It just makes it worse. And so yeah. wet it down. Even if it's on your vehicle, don't brush it off your vehicle. It'll scratch the paint. Blow it off your vehicle with like a leaf blower or like a hose. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. So it's just one of those weird things that when you live in Alaska, you have to, like, you have to deal with. <laughs> right. um, I can't remember if I said this earlier, but the airport will be shut down mm -hmm. um, depending on the uh, the direction of the winds. Um, planes can't fly through that. So yeah. even on my trip to Fairbanks this last weekend, Allison and I had that conversation. Like, okay, well, if the volcano goes off over in Fairbanks, like, here's the plan. Well, you know, if... if uh, if we can drive home, we'll do that. Mm -hmm. um, if we can't drive, we'll just kind of hunker down in Fairbanks and get home when we can get home. You know, I would just be here. You would just be here. <laughs> um, you would have had extended reading time. Well, sure. Um, so that's kind of our volcano prep. Again, because yeah. we are prepared for earthquakes, because we already have like a bunch of earthquake safety stuff and like emergency stuff, we didn't need a lot. Yeah, and I mean, Ash doesn't like destroy things like earthquakes do no. it's, it's more you just can't go outside so we just kind of hunger down but um we are going to kind of rearrange our carport a little bit yep right now we've got the wood kind of at the at the front of our carport like so our, our firewood our firewood so we can't pull our cars all the way forward so we're going to move that and so we can pull my car all the way forward and then pull the jeep all the way forward so they're at least the engines are underneath the carport yeah and then we're still going to cover our cars. It's a weird experience. Like I remember, um, 
the last one we had because ash cloud is just so thick so it just lets so little light through it's like nighttime there's like yeah midday no, and you, just, <laughs> you see this ominous cloud especially with spur because you can see the the i mean it's literally right across the inlet you guys right you can see the volcano at all times so when it erupts we're going to be able to see it real good which is crazy and mm -hmm. then that cloud just like takes over the sky and it just gets so dark so mm -hmm. so that's what's going on um you know, thank you guys for those of you who have reached out. You guys are so sweet. Um, it is close yeah, to us. This is watch. this is one of those things that it will, when it erupts, the odds are, uh, it will certainly impact us and we will uh, share that with all of you. Mm -hmm. um, best place to kind of follow along with us is on Instagram. Just search Leg Life on Instagram mm -hmm. um, and follow us because we'll be posting like whenever it happens, we'll kind of keep you guys updated on how we are let you guys know how we're doing. Yep. Um, and that's the plan. Yeah. Preparing for a frickin' volcano. Yeah, we've been preparing at work for a while, um, making sure, you know, all of our buses, our trains, our buildings, like everything that is, I mean, everything has to be filtered and we're just kind of getting plans in place. <laughs> I appreciate that. Like, mm -hmm. here's the thing. It's the kind of thing that if you think, and this is true with all like disasters or emergency preparedness, mm -hmm. if you think about it and if you plan ahead, it makes the, uh, it makes when it happens, uh, that much easier. Mm -hmm. You can, you can have calm in the middle of chaos because you've already done the preparing. Right. And so I've loved seeing so many people on social media here in Anchorage talking about their volcano prep, um, talking about kind of what they're doing as families. And so I feel like people here are taking it seriously, mm -hmm. uh, mostly because if you grew up here, you've been through this before. <laughs> like we've seen it, we know what happens. Know what um, and sometimes you end up with a little baggie. <laughs> Jerry, you want to know the coolest thing? I didn't see this. There's a little slip inside this. What does it say? It says, I want you to, oh geez, I dropped it. You guys, it says packaged by, and I want Sherry to see if she can see who it says that Mount Spur ash is packaged by. I think it's on the other it. side. Is this the riveting content that you guys <laughs> want to see? Uh-huh. Is Sherry doing that? AJ leg. That's me. <laughs> My cute little angel. AJ leg. That's me, <laughs> Adam Joseph leg. That's adorable. Package that. It just says AJL. Well, that would be me. Um, package that in 1992 when I was 12 years old, the last time Mount Spur erupted. Amazing. I think we should make a little baggie of it when it erupts this time <laughs> and just start my lifetime Mount Spur ash collection. <laughs> You guys, we love you so much. Thanks for hanging out with us on what I know is a different vlog, um, but you guys always like knowing what's going on in our life, and the reality is, is that this is what's going on in our life. Yes, it is. So we'll see you on the next Slug Life video.